Hi, I'm Brett. This is part four of our STI billet block engine upgrade feature story. And in the next five minutes, we're going to talk about extractors. And in our previous videos, one, two, and three, we spoke about the block assembly. We spoke about head design, cams, porting, valve size. Uh, we also spoke, spoke about um, internal studs of the block assembly, head studs, the variation with head studs. We spoke about water pump and oil pump. And now we're going to talk about some of the more external parts such as extractors. And I want to dedicate a video specific to this because this is an area that a lot of people um, buy parts for the wrong reason. And if you've got a Subaru turbo engine, excluding the uh, FA series engines like an MY15 WRX onwards or MY13 Forester onwards, um, which you've got twin scroll turbo tractors, completely different kettle of fish. Let's talk about EJ25 or EJ20 engines right back to, gee, Legacy 1994, very early model WRXs um, and cars from overseas in Japan. The exhaust manifolds on those Subarus right up to current model STI, and I'm talking the VH series chassis, EJ25, MY16, MY17 STI, the exhaust manifolds really have not changed a lot since 1994, with the ex exception of um, an O2 sensor bung that is fitted in here for the emissions based requirements of the later model engines. And I'm meaning this type of design, um, unequal um, length, um, cast iron exhaust manifold off the heads, front connector pipe, and then a cast iron collector assembly and the up pipe. Now, on the 0102 um, WRX bug eyes and some of the early model Foresters, in here was a small catalytic converter. That's probably the biggest exception of the model. Um, but as you can see, this part here has normally got a heat, a heat, um, uh, heat shields on it, which covers the flexible pipe. It's a common upgrade to um, replace the catal little catalytic converter with a catless up pipe on those models. But if you're looking for that holy grail of increasing performance, don't fall into the trap of thinking a set of extractors on your turbo Subaru um, with a turbo back exhaust and a reliable tune is going to make any difference. I'm going to upset a few people here and say a set of extractors like this compared to factory standard on a tuned EJ series engine with a turbo back exhaust, waste the money. Virtually makes no difference at all. The only reason you may want to change the extractors is if you want a different exhaust note or unfortunately if you've fallen in a trap of someone selling you a set of extractors because it's going to give you an increase in performance. These parts are probably the single most expensive and labour intensive part to replace on the exhaust system on the Subaru. You can see why, there's lots of heat shields. Um, if you've got a car that maybe you want to replace them because your factory parts have failed, yes, that's something you may want to consider. But you then need to carefully consider the brand of extractors. And um, these are a Japanese extractor, you can see the quality. Um, unfortunately, there's a lot of junk on the market now, typically aftermarket um, steel extractors crack and they just don't last because these parts remember when you've got your foot buried to the floor typically glow red hot because up top here is where the turbo sits because um, this is the inlet to the turbo with all the exhaust energy that drives the turbo generates the boost and then from there outwards and down is your turbo back exhaust so forward of the turbo I encourage you to seriously consider sticking with a factory standard exhaust manifold um, they don't crack they're reliable. The worst you may have is Ratley heat shields. Now, if you're then doing big engine upgrades, say for example, you pulled your engine apart, your pistons and rods, you're going to put a good turbo on it, then you start thinking about replacing them with the extractors because these parts will typically flow better and flow more horsepower than the factory standard part. I do know that there are mild gains to be had by replacing on the early models this front crossover pipe, which is quite small, um, and retaining the rest of the exhaust manifold on the original factory exhaust manifold but for a whole replacement assembly sometimes it may be something you want to consider now when we're talking about big engine upgrades this this set of extractors to give you an idea of how good the Japanese extractors and I mean genuinely made Japanese extractors not something that's manufactured in China then sold under a Japanese brand um, you're talking a higher price than normal for something that's going to last a lot longer and you'll notice the only exception is this particular one doesn't have a flexible joint in the outpipe, which we normally try to include, but a lot of aftermarket um, Japanese extractors don't have a flexible joint, which I'm not entirely comfortable about because there's a lot of growth and shrinkage of these components when the engine is um, 
in its operating conditions because it glows red hot and shrinks and expands. Subaru put these parts in their components for a reason. The reason why it's got a flex joint there is to take into account the movement of the exhaust system under load. Now, this one doesn't. Okay, we can talk about that later, but you'll notice across the front here, it does have a slip joint, um, which allows for a bit of growth and movement in the exhaust manifold from left to right. Um, you'll notice we've put some heat shielding around this part of it here to protect some of the lower parts of the engine around the cam cover and around the back of the radiator. This is something that you may want to consider, but certainly needed if you're going for that holy grail of big engine upgrades. And of course, in this situation, it would be absolutely ridiculous for us to put a factory standard exhaust manifold on such an engine upgrade such as this, because this type of design would therefore limit the, port, the, the gas flow of the engine. We've got good heads, we've got good pistons and rods, we've got a slightly increased capacity. So therefore, this would then be the next restriction from a performance point of view. And when we talk about the turbo in a second, you'll understand why we want to obviously match all the parts together. So. The comment that is important to remember at the end of this video, and I'll leave you with this, is matching the parts. Bigger is not always better. Different brands' exhaust manifolds have got different diameters. Some of them are equal length, some of them are unequal length. The, that typically changes the note of the exhaust, but this design typically for equal length, creating a consistent exhaust pulse, single one out up to the turbo, is genuinely accepted to bring the car on boost a little bit earlier. So when you're going for an engine build of this size, Typically, you're going to end up with a bigger turbo. Bigger turbo means a little bit more lag, so you've got to do everything you can to maximise the low-end performance, variable cam control, good exhaust pulse, bringing these things on early as possible from a tuning point of view, um, the boost control system. Otherwise, you end up with a car that is like a light bulb. that has got nothing, 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 and all of a sudden it hits heaps and heaps of boost because of the laggy design of some of these turbos. Now, newer model turbos have got more bottom-end performance for the bigger capacity these days as well. And we'll talk about the turbo benefits in, a, in our next video. But talking about extractors, these are the things you need to consider. Um, this set is off an earlier model car. It's got a lot of exhaust, I mean, oil leaks all over it, but you can see what we're talking about. Um, you can search our website for extractors, put in the keyword extractors, and that'll give you a whole heap of options as a search commander. Of course, you can put in your year maker model, whether it's a Subaru, Mazda, Mitsubishi, Holden, or Ford, or whatever it is around the world. We've got thousands of parts linked to exact models now of a range of brands, Subaru, genuine parts, Mitsubishi genuine parts, of course, all the aftermarket parts, white line, GFB, DBA, and all those kinds of stuff, or you can search by brand as well. So follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. Have a look at the bottom of this video link. We'll talk and show you some uh, static photos to these components so you can have a closer look at them. And our next video upgrade, we'll be talking about um, intercoolers, inlet manifolds, and turbo design and the air intake um, to finish this package off because we're looking forward to getting this engine built and back in the car. But for now, wherever you are in the world, I hope this video has helped you. My name is Brett Middleton. Thanks for watching.